Hi, it's Gary Chimes from Lake Washington Sports and Spine. And what I want to talk about today are NSAIDs and why they're bad. So NSAIDs stand for non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. And the main classes that people are familiar with are ibuprofen, which goes by the brand name of Advil or Motrin, or naproxen, which goes by the brand name of Aleve. There's other ones like the Clopinac and Voltaren, and these are probably the most widely used medications for musculoskeletal conditions, but in my opinion, they should not be used at all. So uh, I personally have a long history of using NSAIDs myself as a past. When I was a uh, age group triathlete in my 20s, I used to take ibuprofen as a vitamin. I know that's a very common pattern. And as I started hearing information about the downsides of NSAIDs over my medical career over the last 20 years, I was in a state of denial, but I think uh, my uh, perspective is that we really should not be using these medications at all. But let's talk about it in terms of pros and cons, because nosferidols are recommended all the time, and so what is the pro? If you take a nosferidol anti-inflammatory like Advil or Aleve, it probably will make you feel better for the 2 to 12 hours after you take it, so that's the pro. So what are the cons? So there's a bunch of cons. One of the cons is that it can affect kidneys. So uh, if you take non anti-inflammatories, it can cause acute renal failure, which can cause permanent kidney, uh, renal failure that can put people onto dialysis or kill them. Uh, that's especially important for endurance athletes because you may be in a state of dehydration, which makes you more vulnerable. So the effect on the kidneys, it's a big deal, even if you're taking relatively low doses. Another is going to be GI bleeds, things like having ulcers or gastrointestinal bleeds. The estimates is that probably kills about 4,000 people a year. To give some perspective, breast cancer kills about 40,000 people per year, so you probably have 10% as many deaths related to bleeds from non-steroidal anti-inflammatories as breast cancer. Um, when you throw in the kidneys, we're probably talking about 17,000 deaths per year. Uh, there's different estimates, but that's basically the range we're probably seeing from the complications of non-steroidals. That's not even getting to the big one. The big one is on cardiovascular health. Uh, this is information we've had now for, you know, going back probably at least 20 years. Uh, one of the medications, uh, Biox, which is a type of non anti-inflammatory, was pulled from the market, market because of concerns about cardiovascular deaths. Um, but this has been shown to be true in the standard over-the-counter non like ibuprofen and, and naproxen. Um, how big is the scale of this? Um, it's not quite clear. What we do know is that people with osteoarthritis are about four times higher risk for cardiovascular disease, and a recent study showed that about 41% of that increased risk is contributing to, is from the use of non anti-inflammatories by people with osteoarthritis. So you extrapolate that out, that might be in the hundreds of thousands. So that is, it's a pretty, it's a pretty bad news medication. In my opinion, I think if they came on the market now, I don't know if they would be approved by the FDA. But let's say it's a wonderful musculoskeletal medicine, but you have the concern about the kidneys, the GI bleeds, and the cardiovascular, then you're getting to a discussion about the pros and cons. In my opinion, the reason that we shouldn't be using non-steroidals is even though they give short-term pain relief, they actually interfere with long-term healing. And this is something, again, that we've now known for decades. People who are on trauma units who are taking non-steroidal anti-inflammatories, the bones take longer to heal. We know that the interface between the tendon and the bone called the anthesis, those take longer to heal. So people who are like endurance athletes, for example, tendons just don't heal as well when you use non steroidal anti-inflammatories. In clinics like ours, where we use techniques like platelet-rich plasma or stem cell stimulants, those get blocked by non steroidal anti-inflammatories. So it really interferes with the healing cascade. There's another issue also. When you take a medication for short-term analgesia, the, your body will adjust its pain thermostat to match that of the medication. And this leads to the NSAID paradox, which is that if people take NSAIDs for a short period, they feel better for two to 12 hours. But if you follow those people over six months, they're actually often in more pain. Part of that is that the NSAIDs are interfering with healing, but part of it is that their body has adjusted its pain thermostat to match having the medication on board, so people actually do worse. And that's an important point because your body needs to be able to perceive pain. Pain is a signal to the body that you have some tissue that needs to have appropriate recovery. And when you interfere with that cascade, the body does not want that to be true and it will adjust the pain thermostat to match. So really what you're looking at is short-term gain as the upside versus long-term harm to the musculoskeletal tissue as well as the effect on the heart, the GI system, and the kidneys. 
So for all these reasons, I don't think NSAIDs are a good choice. I think that's especially true for endurance athletes, but I think that's a true across the board. So what are you supposed to do? And really, the bottom line is you should treat the injury. You know, and I think we understand this for things that are not musculoskeletal injury. If somebody has a heart attack, we don't say, hey, what is what do I do to take the edge off? You treat the heart issue. If you have appendicitis, you don't ask, what do I need to do to take the edge off? You treat the issue. If you're having a musculoskeletal issue, what you really need to do is get a focused assessment to diagnose the problem and then have focal treatments of treating that issue. And I just think it's one of these things. There's not a free lunch and there's no pill that's going to really successfully manage the condition without having harms associated with it. So bottom line, I would not take NSAIDs. This is Gary Chimes from Lake Washington Sports and Spine.